Hey all, how you doing? This is Chris Tang. Here's a talk on phaco chop. So what is phaco chop? Phaco chop is where you use the phaco pro and a second instrument to disassemble a cataract into smaller pieces. And as a result, you take a large cataract out through a smaller five millimeter to six millimeter or any size capsule rexus. It was first introduced by Nagahara in 1993, and he described horizontal chopping by moving the tips of the phaco pro and the second instrument together. This is the basic concept of phaco chop, and I always remember this picture whenever I'm doing phaco chop. We have to think of the lens resembling the grain within a wood, and the natural lamellar orientation of the fiber creates natural fracture planes. And I always remember how this looks. The top of the lens has this softer nuclear um, cortical material that you want to remove first before you get to the meat of the fibers of the cataract, which are aligned in a vertical manner. We have to think of phaco chop like chopping wood. You can saw through the diameter of a log until the last connection bridge is weak, which is basically sculpting, which is sawing through the wood. And then you could do vertical chop, which is like placing the log upright and using an ax to chop. It never ceases to amaze me when I see people splitting wood and just one chop can split the wood. And we all know that that's because of the fibers being aligned vertical. And we saw from the picture before, the same thing happens with the cataract. There's two types of chopping. There's horizontal chop in which you move the instruments together in the horizontal plane, and that's a compressive force. And there's vertical chop in which you move the instruments first in the vertical direction. I say to my residents, go down and then out. And that represents a shearing force, just like chopping of the wood. There's stop and chop, which is first described by Paul Koch, and quick chop by Fukuzaku, in which you embed the phaco tip in the nucleus, and then you vertical chop. These are the wound positions for horizontal chop. We have to remember the angles and the angles of approach. For me, sitting in the temporal position, I like to have my paracentesis and main wound at 30 to 45 degrees apart, because that allows my second instrument to move in unison and encounter traction with my phaco probe. If we think about vertical chop, this same position works for horizontal and vertical. You gotta think about the nuances of where to place the paracentesis in relation to the phaco probe. And then this is exactly like an ax. Look at those arrows, look at the angle of approach. It's like an ax going into the piece and that's vertical chop down and out. We have to think about the horizontal and vertical chop settings on the phaco machine. This is one of the phaco machines here. Now for sculpt, you don't have to buzz in and hold the piece using vacuum. All you do is you just use the phaco handpiece as counter traction of the second instrument. And you want to have low vacuum, low aspiration, and want to have a fixed setting. And we can tell what the fixed setting is based on that line in that circle on vacuum. Now for vertical chop, we want to have a high vacuum, high aspiration, and a fixed setting. We want to have that line set horizontally. Now, one of the intro things for residents is to know what fixed and linear mean. And you, to tell on the machine, you just look at that horizontal line. This is a really important slide here. Foot position one in the foot pedals of a FACO machine, foot position one is set at irrigation, and that provides a source of fluid infusion. I basically use continuous irrigation for all my cases because I don't want to have to think about stepping down into a foot position of 10 to 15 percent the entire time I'm in the eye. Of course, if you had a complication or have other situations, then you just kick right on the foot pedal setting, whatever you set it at, to turn the irrigation on or off. Foot position two is the vacuum and the aspiration of fluid. And that controls the vacuum and the relative aspiration rate of the fluid from the eye, and that can be set at fixed and linear. And you just look at that line. If it's fixed, once you step down into position two, it goes to that set level. So if it was set at 525 before, I'm just going to go straight to 125. There's nothing in the middle. It's like going from zero to 100. If it's set 100 miles per hour, you're going to go straight to 100 miles per hour, and there's no in between. On a linear setting, your foot has control over that range. So the top position at position, position two provides less vacuum or flow than the middle or the bottom range of the pedal. The vacuum and aspiration levels created during the surgery draw the fluid out of the eye. 
And then in full position three, that's when you kick into the ultrasound energy. There's so many advantages to phaco chop. There's a reduction in sculpting, reduction in phaco energy, reduction in the stress on the zonules and capsular bag, decreased reliance on the red reflex. It's more efficient use of the phaco machine and the instruments, and really it's a fun technique to do. I'm, it never ceases to amaze me every time you hit a vertical chop, how straightforward and easy um, the cataract splits, just like a piece of wood. This is from David Chang's chop book. The horizontal chop, you're moving the second instrument against the phaco piece, and then you're moving it out to create the chop. This is a video of that. So first you wanna shave off the top layer of the softer cortical material. Then you wanna dig a little bit of a hole in order to maintain uh, counter traction of the second instrument. At this point, I'm not stepping down on my foot pedal. I'm just uh, moving my second instrument out under the rexus and over the side of the piece. And then I'm pushing it towards the phaco handpiece, which is just serving as counter traction. So this is like a sawing motion without the, the sawing action, but it's just moving uh, the instruments together as a compressive force. And then each step begets the next. Here you can step down a little bit if you wanna pull the piece towards you. I could have just reached around without stepping down as well. And then you can throw in some mini chops uh, to complete the case. Mm -hmm. So this is a relatively straightforward procedure. There are some pitfalls with the second instrument you want to make sure that you get under the capsular rexus and you reach and up over and then tilt down a little bit because you don't want to scratch the top surface, then you won't be able to propagate the chop. That takes a little bit of getting used to. This is vertical chop. You buzz down with your foot into position uh, three to get a good ultrasonic and then vacuum hold on position two. You hold it on position two and then you use a down and out motion with the second instrument to create the vertical chop. With vertical chop, you also wanna dig a little bit deep because you don't wanna scratch a top surface. So you remove that softer anterior cortical layer to, in order to get down into the meat of the nucleus. And then you buzz down in position three, hold on position two, and then you propagate the chop in a down and out motion. Once you do that, you rotate the piece and then chops work where you get two chops and that begets four and then you can hit six or eight depending on how many pieces you want out. I typically chop into quadrants and then I chop the quadrant into an eighth because if you take out a quadrant through a smaller rexus there's a risk for ripping the capsule rexus. In horizontal chop the most important instrument is the second instrument and in vertical chop the most important is the phaco handpiece hold on the piece. And the second instrument, which is typically a sharp instrument, provides uh, the cutting and the down and out. But it's predicated on getting a really good vacuum hold. So you can see in this case, I'm propagating more and more vertical chops. I like to take out smaller pieces first. So you take out the smaller pieces and then each piece gets the next. Here I flip my instrument to a horizontal chopper. I had the spike vertical chopper before and I have a double-ended instrument that I use, so I just flip it to the other side, so I get the uh, horizontal blunt tip chopper. And then once you take those out, you can do some mini chops in order to take out the rest of the nucleus. So here are some common pitfalls in horizontal chop. It's not hooking the nucleus equator with the chopper. You wanna make sure you tilt a little bit up and over, so you get a little bit deeper than just the anterior portion of the cataract. You, therefore, you shouldn't be elevating the chopper tip as the chop is performed. You can also be pressing down on the paracentesis, so you wanna make sure you have your angles of approach right. You wanna go from a high to a low position. And of course, you certainly don't want to place the chopper above the anterior capsule because then you could chop the anterior capsule. In vertical chop, if you don't embed deep enough with a phaco, in really dense cases, it's not gonna wanna propagate because the piece fights back. The piece is so dense that it fights back. So you wanna dig a little hole first so you can get 50% depth hold on the nucleus before you propagate the chops. Otherwise, the piece is gonna fight back. And if you place the chopper tip too close to your phaco tip, you can break the vacuum occlusion of the phaco tip and then you have to reset the handpiece hold onto the piece. 
So what technique to use? In the horizontal chop, it's softer nuclei, trace the two plus nuclei, and vertical chop, it's for dense nuclei, anywhere from two plus to pernescent lenses. The instruments in horizontal chop, you, use one, you want to use the blunt ended tip with the inner cutting surface, and vertical chop, a sharp tip to penetrate the dense nucleus. So the key points, Vaco chopping decreases the ultrasound energy and stress on the zonules. In horizontal chop, it's a compressive force. You don't need to get a vacuum hold of the piece. You just can use uh, the FACO handpiece as counter traction against the uh, motion of the second instrument. In vertical chop, it's searing, shearing forces. You want to get a good hold on the nucleus, and then you want to do a down and out motion. And the most important instrument in horizontal chop is the chopper, and in vertical chop, is the FACO tip. And I find these techniques to be efficient, fun, and safe. Thank you so much.